Hello folks, welcome to another Bitcoin market analysis by Inspo Crypto. First of all, <laughs> I'm receiving so many DMs asking what is happening to me, why I'm not tweeting anymore, or I was extremely active in the last years and now it stopped. Well, because a lot of things are changing and so also my life. You can imagine taking into account what is happening to the banking sector. It would be absolutely stupid from my side if I would say, well, it's fine for me. I don't care. Uh, of course I care because that's what I'm doing to get money to pay everything I have here. And yeah, unfortunately my fixed costs are not that low. So obviously I need to work even more and to invest more time in plan B, C, D, E, F and so on and so forth. So, you know, about Phoenicia, uh, I, I have so many projects, that's another thing. I mean, I'm working full time and at the same time I need to realize all these plan B, C's, D's because when it starts, I need these plans B, C's, D's to keep providing analysis, to be, you know, to chill a little bit and to have and to hold my existence. So it's it's not, hey, Inspo is done and he is gone and no, I will tweet again. And today I was so, so close to tweet again. But then again, I had a meeting and well, I forgot it once again. But just to make it clear, I'm not gone. I'm just, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, I would say I have to priorize at the moment. And I'm so sorry. I mean, also all those people who spent a lot of time in my Discord server, I don't remember when I visit my own Discord server last time because I really don't have the time. And I have said so many times, you can ignore everything and that's absolutely fine. It's your life, but I can't do it because I know what will happen. So it would be just stupid to ignore it. You can do it if you want. I'm not going to do it, you know, and when the time is ready, I will tell you more what I'm doing and why I'm doing it and in what kind of assets I'm investing in and why I'm doing it <laughs> and so on and so forth. But it's not time yet. It's absolutely not time yet. Just to make it absolutely sure because I'm receiving so many DMs, I'm not replying and I'm not not replying to you because I don't respect you anymore. It's just really I don't have the time. It's even pain in the ass for me to make this analysis every day. But I know that I'm providing a full view of what's happening on the markets and on the crypto market also related to on-chain analysis. For me, that's a responsibility, a responsibility to keep doing it and to provide this information. I could cut and say, guys, you are getting your refund for those who paid annual subscription and have a good life. But that's not inspo. It wasn't me and that's not going to be me never ever because that's not my spirit. So we will keep doing it. I'm not gone. I will come back <laughs> or at least I will be more actively tweeting and sharing more information, but please have a little bit more patience because at the moment I feel like I need four brains, 1000 hands and you know, okay. 
So let us talk a little bit more about what will happen this week. So tomorrow is going to be a very interesting day. Um, you know, we are, at least I miss the pivot. <laughs> Something that since last year, March, April, May, some experts out there were always spreading this false narrative. Fed is going to pivot because otherwise the market is going to crash. But they never said what's the alternative. And I have mentioned so many times, they don't have any other option. They don't have. Because inflation, one part, it's a threat for the economy long term. And interest rates, of course, bring some trouble. Uh, you need to kill something. <laughs> it's just not possible. They killed actually the economy a decade ago. They, I mean, in particular with all the COVID and with all the cheap money they, they, they started to print again, they killed every single option. So it does make sense to say we are going to pivot for what? To get what? A crash? Well, yeah. But you can imagine a rising inflation. It's not going to be in favor of the next election campaign. The people are not going to understand when you say, yeah, but you know, Inflation is good for you because then you have a job. And even that is wrong. People think if the Fed is starting to pivot, companies will hire again. No, companies don't hire because pivot. They don't hire people because of a low inflation. Oh, sorry, that was wrong. They hire because a low inflation, because a low inflation attracts consumption and that's absolutely and without any doubt what companies need a high inflation artificially make their products just expensive it's not attracting retail it's not attracting any anyone to buy to to consume and that's one problem but of course interest rates a, high, a rising interest rate brings pressure to companies because they are also yelling like banks liquidity. We are since a while in a transformation, not only of the banking sector, of different other companies and industries as well. The digitalization it's not just to have, I don't know, an LED television in front of you or to have an iPad. <laughs> it's much more. Digitalization of processes, digitalization of a whole uh, yeah, chain of processes that's much bigger and takes time and investment capital, something mm, that is, of course, also linked to liquidity, something that at the moment, you know, it's a little bit rare. However, the central banks open wide their um, wallets and said, hey, banks, if you need liquidity, you can get liquidity. It's not for free, but you can get it for some interest. You can have it and they took it. But the problem is they didn't invest this money. They could, some would say it, it would make sense to invest that money to be better prepared for the future. Some others would say stupid like me to invest that money 
right now in the current situation, it doesn't make sense. I would also just look to make as much money as I can to have a bigger puffer and in case everything crash, well, at least I have my rescue boat there. And that's what they are doing. And that's what the markets are doing what they are doing. That's why we have an SPY that it goes down and then just in a few hours it push up like a rocket and you say, wow, that's, you know, one of the biggest markets worldwide. It didn't happen in the past, but now it happens using short term option just not only to drive the markets, but at the same time to make quick profit. Turbo capitalism, it's a new version. I would say it's 2.0. <laughs> it's, it's definitely past better testing. <laughs> And that's what's happening. Unfortunately, that's what's happening. Our system is overheated. Politicians did a wrong, did a lot of wrong decisions. Central bankers did it. But that's also not new. I was watching uh, in, in recent uh, days, now with, with holidays, um, with uh, my, my wife, uh, actually uh, a series. Sometimes. It doesn't take long. Uh, since a while we are watching it sometimes. When I have time. <laughs> And the name is Dope Sick. And Dope Sick is a little bit illustrating you how our system works. You have big guys with a lot of volume. With good network. And then you have the victims, the mass. And usually politicians only, at least the governments and the opposition, they just care about the masses when their election campaign starts. Sometimes also just to bring some pain to the government when they are in the opposition, for example, just You know, to say, you are now in the government. I can be an asshole now. I can bring you some pain. That's the only thing. They take you serious then, take some topics to the Senate or, you know, to the Parliament. And they say, yeah, but look, you missed that. You mentioned just two years ago, you are going to bring more I don't know, a better education to the people, you missed it. Well, yeah, they missed it, maybe, but you would miss it as well, because we have a mechanism that works with corruption, that works with lobbyism, that works... I mean, I'm not going to start now a big discussion about if our democracy is good or not. I would say almost every single theory is good. But how people are driving it, it's wrong. I mean, for many, also for me, I'm a generation that the core of, of the society is democracy. Freedom of speech. We are always saying democracy is the biggest invention in history. Well, just check a little bit what the Greeks had in mind when they invented democracy. It wasn't what we have in mind. Free speech for everyone. It doesn't matter if you are a woman, a man, if you are black, if you are white, if you are whatever color your skin has or whatever. It was completely different. Only wealthy people could vote, only men, no woman, of course not slaves. Slaves didn't have anything to do in a polit politics system and, and the old Greek systems. 
And so democracy, what we have today is completely different. And this transformation of democracy happened because of us, of the masses, of our grandfathers and our fathers. So once again, it depends on us, not on a, you know, technology. Some people are saying, hey, the only thing that can save our society and democracy is Bitcoin. That's a cold fart. That's not true. Bitcoin could support a stream, a trend. Of course, it could. And fix some problems. But not the whole problem. The whole problem is those, and it starts with those people who are going just to elect always the same parties. Because they are watching TV and always the same parties are making advertisement there. Because they have the money to do it. The little parties, Lucy who has maybe the right program. Those who are taking serious the problems of the society. At least yet. <laughs> If they are empowered, could change as well. As we know. Nobody wants to vote them. Nobody is going to sign and say, yeah, I'm going to elect them. At least really, really tiny percentage of the electors do that. What they have in USA with Republicans and Dem Democrats is the same we have in Germany with CDU, that's the Christian Conservative Union. And the SPD, that's the Social Democrats, like Republicans and Democrats. And yes, we have the Greens as well. It's, you know, to have a Green Party is just like to say, I don't know, it's the fifth wheel in your car. <laughs> you need them. But no, no one wants them. Okay, no, sorry. I, maybe you, you, you elect them. I, I'm sorry in, in, in that case. But however, also the liberals. We have in Germany liberals. But liberals are like a flag. It depends how the wind is. They change the direction. Oh, it doesn't care. They don't have really a, an opinion. They say yes. To the SPD to join their government or they say yes to the CDU to join their government. It's not the same in the US but in Germany, in Spain, in Netherlands, in France and tell me what country doesn't have such kind of a structure. And is that exactly why we have democracy? Usually not. I'm actually even a friend to say, you know, a president should be something like a CEO. Usually the shareholders say, okay, yeah, I'm going to vote for this guy here as a CEO of our companies because he is saying he has actually a good opinion and strategy how to increase my wealth, how to make this company bigger. And get more market shares in the next 10, 15 years. If he is not doing that, I'm going to kick his ass out of this company. It happened many times in different companies. In small, but also in big ones. But in the governments, when, I mean... Do you remember when that happens last time? Just imagine you have a program and this politician who is going to be elected as next president says you will have less inflation. We will do everything that you have more money in your wallet end of the month. We will give you a health insurance for free because 
obviously, in my opinion, maybe I'm too German here, but it is your right to be healthy. It shouldn't cost anything. But that's another thing. Okay, however, we skip this topic because I know that some American, they, they have also good arguments, would say, yeah, but, you know, pff, go to work. I mean, why to pay for something when you are not needing it? Yeah, sometimes I think as well, I'm paying every month and sometimes I say, hey, mate, I go once in a year to the doctor, but I have to pay for everyone. So I, I you know, not everything is black or white. However, The thing is, the whole construction, the whole system we have built in the last 18 years, I would say 80 years, let us talk about after World War II. Not only in Europe, also in the US and other countries. If we talk about transformation, or about the culture, for example, we will see that as well. Everything is transforming. But the question is, is the system transforming because we have changed? Or is the system trying to change us instead? And that is the core question that nobody is, almost nobody is doing. Because in my opinion, it's not just The whole system is adapting to what we are doing or demanding. <laughs> something else, something, I'm not saying someone, something else is changing the system and forcing the masses to adapt to that system. And that's why we are getting what we are getting. It's not, it's, you know, it's not just to say how the central bankers just mismanaged. They did it because they didn't knew that. That's wrong. That's absolutely wrong. Because even a decade away, uh, ago, some economists were saying, guys, you are, are making really bad work. And big companies said, shh, Shut up. Shut fucking up. Because what they are doing is good for us. Yeah, for everyone. I'm getting cheap money. I can invest. I can get more market shares. I can spend more money for lobbyism. And I can get more better things, better deals, making more money in less time. And yeah, yeah, baby, yeah. That's bullish. But maybe short term. What's about long term impacts? Nobody cared. I mean, we see that. It, it's the same, the same situation right now. Nobody cares. Bankers are saying, oh, we need more liquidity. Yeah, but why we need more liquidity? What happened with all your money? Oh, you gambled. Oh, I'm so sorry. Just imagine you have a stupid moron as a child. And you give him per week. That's, I guess, for teenager a lot or not. Today, I guess, maybe not. <laughs> But 100 bucks per week. 400 bucks per month. It works. And then every four days it come back and say, hey, dad, <laughs> I'm sorry, but I need more money. <laughs> you know, Jessica, my, my former girlfriend, she's, she's gone. I have a new one. She, she I, you know, I need to invest a little bit something in this relation. So please give me a little bit more money. Yeah, okay, come on. It's, you know. Once, no problem, here, another 50 bucks. So we are talking about 150 bucks. But in two days, he comes back. Hey, Dad, uh, she wasn't the right one. 
But now I think I have a nice girlfriend there, a potentially girlfriend. I need another 60 bucks because, you know, cinema, popcorn, inflation, you know, everything. Yeah, okay, come on, 60 bucks. Day after, he stays here as well. Hey, Dad, oh, come on. Shut up. I mean, you should have a queue of girlfriends, moron. I thought you are my son. <laughs> Now it's okay, it's a little bit too much. But what I'm saying is they feel comfortable with that. If you're giving them a blank check, what do you think they will do? And that's what happened. And that's why we are where we are. Let us take a look to the, to the data. I mean, let us take a look to the data. Let us make a comparison between the US and Japan because nobody is talking about Japan. We know that Japan is great. It's great. The central bankers are saying, ah, pfft. what? Rise interest rates? <laughs> we don't need that. Of course we don't need that. Why we should? Let us take a look. I mean, of course Japan has a different history as, as the US. But government debt to GDP in percent and we know that many people are talking about us bankrupt that debts oh my god that debts it's unbelievable yeah maybe it is 129 percent of the gdp that's the <laughs> that's the debt in persons by the us let us take a look to japan Holy shit! 262% of the GDP! Holy! Yeah! Yeah! Let us take a look. Unemployment rate. Japan. 2.8%. That was last in March. Previous 2.6%. Let us take the US. Oh look! 3.6% instead of 3.5%. That's the opposite like Japan. Why? And that's really interesting. The US is rising interest rates, right? The monetary policy driven by the Fed, it's bad. It's extremely bad. But of course, the policy of, of BOJ, the Bank of Japan, is much better. But what's happening here? Something is not working. Inflation rate. Oh, at least it declined. 3.3, 3.2. Now it makes sense. BOJ is doing a great job. Isn't doing it? Let us take a look to the US. Oh, what? Wait. From 6 to 5%? Instead of 3.3 to 3.2? What's happening there? What I want to say is the whole system has a huge disruption. The problem that we have can't be fixed just by one central bank. It can't be fixed by one nation. And of course we know that the whole global structure is splitting in at least two parts. The bipolar world we have, you know, Russia, China, the BRICS, and then we have the Western. Everything is much more complex. It's not about pivot. It's not about inflation. It's, you know, you can try to delay something. You can try, yeah, just to delay something. But the story doesn't have a happy end. And it hurts to say that because I'm, uh, many of you don't believe that, but I'm a crypto believer. I'm someone that I know that crypto is our future. But when our economy goes down, crypto will go down as well. However, money 
always like you have a closed room and you start to pump water? What is doing the water when it's ju just going to fill every single corner of this room? It will try to find any single and tiny hole to escape. And that's what money also does. You need to be a little bit more, not, not saying that to have a little or maybe part of your portfolio crypto is bad. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Even I think the bigger dip is, is still to come, but definitely not. But don't go all in in one asset. Spread your capital. Be creative. Start to wide a little bit your angle. Just telling you that. Okay. That was really entertaining <laughs> even for me. So let us go forward. So then let us take a look do the weights ratio one day time frame. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm checking many times. I, I have all the time, for example, here my uh, my chart open. And, and the great thing is you can always see uh, what orders are uh, coming in. And it's, it's very interesting because you can see many times that they use now, for example, here 60, 60 bitcoins uh, almost at once, here another 60, then 110 bitcoins, and so on and so forth. But it depends if they are pushing up at that moment, you will see they are selling big, they are even selling bigger than buying it. So it has a little bit the character of distribution. And maybe that also explains why the weights ratio is going up once again. 64 yesterday, you see that uh, that was Monday, uh, Sunday. Uh, we went down, I would say about 43, 44. Uh, then Saturday we were at 60 and that explains why the wealth ratio is pushing up because they are sending more Bitcoins to centralized exchanges, but they are not nuking the market. They are only distributing. Th that's the only thing. That's the big change that happens. Every time you see they are pushing up the price, I guess mainly, and that explains also why the future volume is increasing um, compared to the spot one. They are pushing up the prices, then they are noticing that also retailers jumping in because of course bull run, bullish, moon tomorrow, and they start then to sell bigger. Clever, really smart. I mean, no doubt, I never have said that these guys are stupid. They are really smart. So, um, and that explains in my opinion uh, why the weights ratio is pushing up, but n we don't see any kind of big nuke. I mean, look what they did here. Was that the result? Was that maybe the result? Usually it doesn't take that long. If you have such a weights ratio that's pushing up very hard, usually you should see this here almost here and not here. So they sent a lot of Bitcoins and they are maintaining and yeah, then they are distributing bigger, you know, they distributed, they pushed up with futures once again, then they distributed even bigger, such kind of correction. And then they pushed even more um, while the uh, weight ratio was declining after it pushed up very much. I think this push up was related to this um, um, price correction. And, you know, then we had this weight ratio pushing up and then afterwards we see that here pushing up more. Now that here, it seems they feel absolutely comfortable to distribute at a level between 27 and 31. And that's why it's happening. Why they are not nuking the market like they did 
over and over again in 2022. In my opinion, that's my own theory, 2022 was exit. Many big entities just had their sell off. They just wanted to leave the market. And now we have some other entities, I think also hedge funds making quick profits, pushing up, distributing, buy the local dip, go more up and so on and so forth. And that's it. I think that explains a lot. So however, uh, we need to see uh, what they will do next. Uh, if we take a look now here, for example, we can see that we received uh, big amounts of Bitcoins to centralized exchanges. The month is two days old. We will see the net flow just in the next chapter, how it looks like. We also can see that um, once again, they were indicating that they want to push up the price. They, 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 to, to be honest, I mean, for, for short term trading, the one hour time frame weights ratio is the best. It's really the best. But it's really difficult to see, for example, like here, you remember what I said, ah, something, something bigger is coming and boom, it went up. The problem is you don't know if it's a pump and dump. It's just indicating that some just entities, um, those who are driving the markets are doing something. In that case, hey, I'm stop sending bitcoins. And that usually is also indicating that something they are planning to push up the price. So uh, it seems at least related to the waste ratio. I mean, that's the one hour time frame. It could go, uh, it could go down once again. That would indicate we will go more up. At the moment, it looks like a little bit we are reaching our top for today, maybe or whatever. And usually under the current um, conditions, I would say maybe we would go up to 28.8, a little bit more and that's it. And now then we need to see if we will maintain if the waste ratio one hour time frame is going to push up to 100 again, that would be the hey, start your short indica indicator, but at the moment not happening. You can also see that the waste ratio 30 hours moving average moved from 81 to 80, almost 89. They are avoiding 90%, ab everything above of 90% and the one hour time frame in the waste ratio usually indicates we are going to dump. They are not doing it. They are really not doing it. Even this move here was extremely controlled, extremely controlled. However, uh, we see that the stablecoin reserves on centralized exchanges are declining. Uh, we had here, of course, close before we pushed up. We had here also a push in stablecoin reserves on centralized exchanges. Afterwards, it declined. It would make sense. Cash out, distribution, and so on and so forth. Why the 30 hours moving average and waste ratio is not declining really uh, like it happened in the past, where it just go down, it maintains. So I would be careful because, you know, we had here 2,900 bitcoins. A net flow indicating we receive much more bitcoins here than outflows and another 2300 bitcoins here that was today in the morning and that was yesterday in the evening something you should think about and once again we can see that here we received here yesterday evening 3000 bitcoins here then afterwards at midnight, another 1,279, another 700 Bitcoins at 4 a.m. And just two hours later, another 2,700 Bitcoins. Now we can see a bigger cash out. And but at the same time, we are seeing here an outflow of 300 Bitcoins, an outflow of 1,300 Bitcoins. Wait, that was. Uh, 900, 900 Bitcoins, here another 1000 Bitcoins and now here in the last 
few hours 1700 bitcoins so where are the delta of all these inflows usually and that would explain why we have a bigger negative net flow indicating they are not yet selling everything they are not doing it we will check that stablecoin um, stablecoin net flow um, to spot also taking out you can see the last time we had a positive net flow was i guess the preparation for this last uh, leg up before down and since then it looks more red than green indicating they are cashing out and taking out stable coins out of the centralized exchanges So 29th, uh, today, Tuesday, Monday, Sunday, Saturday, Saturday. I mean, funding rate went up extremely. Then we started to decline. People thought, oh yeah, that's it. That's the local bottom. Now I just want to go long because obviously it's a bull run and they were wrong of course binance and co said oh look 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 oh more free money there so of course they liquidate them and here then they started to push up the funding rate once again and the price is following the price is following the funding rate oh strange thing right now it's declining if we take a look to the open interest um well i mean it correlates very well, to be honest. If we take a look to the leverage ratio, I would say also here it correlates very well. Very consistent. So um, if we go a little bit further, every time the same with CryptoCron. I mean, I don't know why it's not just saving my settings to be honest we can see here that um stablecoin net flows related to derivative exchanges yeah we had in sequences a bigger inflow but afterwards a bigger cash out as well so in i would say uh, today was more red than green indicating they are taking out some some money so they did their trade and that's it. And also here, for example, if we take a look, it, it looks really similar uh, to the stable coins um, here related to Bitcoins, related to, to uh, derivative exchanges. Um, looks also more red than green for today. Also here, a bigger amount, 1,440 Bitcoins outflow. Also indicating, you know, we had here a bigger outflow than inflow. So we remember 26, they liquidated almost uh, 5,000 Bitcoins at once, uh, longs, but also shorts. But yesterday, especially they liquidated almost longs. It was 1,876 Bitcoins and longs and only 231 Bitcoins and shorts. I guess today, exactly the opposite. So if they just maintain a really small uh, trade range of three, four thousand, that would be absolutely enough to liquidate enough people. It doesn't matter if they are longing, if they are shorting, they can liquidate both sides and get more money. Uh, for a centralized exchange like Binance, that's crazy. I was reading that they are generating more fees now. <laughs> well, more fees than just before when they had their zero fees promo. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to be a professor of math, but that's not magic. <laughs> okay, however, wash trading was costly, it seems. Uh, we not we need to go forward and oh, another side that don't save my settings. And uh, we see that we are we have fifty nine uh, percent longs and forty one percent shorts. Looks similar um, a little bit well with a little data here uh, 944 millions versus 604 millions in ethereum 61 to 39 
Shorts on Bitfinex coming big. We remember last week 29. Now, and you are right when you see that and you say, ah, it's was drunk. Oh, he, yeah. I don't know. I mean, he is drunk or he has extremely good weed at home. Um, to be <laughs> just in case, I don't have any weed here, but I have very good whiskey, very good rum here. Also some tequila and some other stuff, but I'm not drunk. Bitfinex always have more longs than shorts. 2.6 billion, <laughs> it's a little bit more than 33 million. However, shorts on Bitfinex are usually extremely low. We are talking about almost 17 million, 18 million. To see 33 million, that's extremely bearish at least for Bitfinex. Uh, to see 1.2%, that's a lot. That's really a lot. On Ethereum, it looks also here even better. If we now take a look to the Kingfisher, that it just can take a little bit. So maybe just go and pick up the next bag of popcorn and the next theater because it just can take some hours ah no it's here okay so all leverage oh yes oh yes 500 millions 500 millions in liquidation cluster the last time we had that you remember that we pushed up 2300 3000 dollars in one day i mean that that's that's really crazy. That's really crazy. Uh, that's really crazy. But I, I heard and I'm absolutely not sure that all these liquidation clusters are generated by an algorithm by the Kingfisher. They are, I, I, I really, for me, the Kingfisher, I'm using them, but I, I don't get how, how they make these figures, to be honest. I, I don't. I don't get that. Um, I really don't get that. But however, high high leverage positions are on the long side. Makes sense from 28. Uh, the biggest 210 million. Jesus, someone big is uh, uh, pushing up the price with, with futures, um, even high leverage. Nobody is making any kind of resisting. So uh, if they want to liquidate big, Obviously, we should go down, not up, and that means back to 28k. I mean, it, it's just around the corner. It's not really far, right? But at least that's what it is. Let us go forward. Okay, so, ah, yes, finally we see something. I mean... The price almost reacting to futures. It's not reacting to the USD. That's mainly Gemini, Kraken or Coinbase. Um, Coinbase, I don't know what's happening to Coinbase, but it seems someone told me, yeah, on Coinbase retail is buying with USD Bitcoin as much as they can. Why? Is that in sale or something? Did I miss? Do we have a promo? Buy one Bitcoin, we give you two for free or something. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. But, well, if that's the case, good luck. I mean, I really wish you good luck. I, it's not sarcasm. I really, I, I like Bitcoin. People think I'm a Bitcoin hater. I'm not. I'm a, I don't like Bitcoin maxis. At least those who are bringing stupid arguments why Bitcoin is going to save us. Uh, but uh, I, I like Bitcoin. I really like Bitcoin. Uh, I would love to see Bitcoin as a token with unlimited, really unlimited supply. Or at least 
five billions or something. That would be great. That would be something where I would say, that would be a revolution. That would be something where we need to go to the street so that our government has to adapt to Bitcoin. But not with 21 millions, where almost the half of it is in hands of few entities. Those who, some of you, Bitcoin Marxists say, I hate them. They are the cancer of our system. That's why I'm buying Bitcoin. Yeah, but those guys have your Bitcoins. <laughs> At least many of them. However, um, yeah. So if, if we take a look here, we see that the tether pair with BTC doesn't look bullish. At least they are here. Even the price is pushing up with USD and with futures. They are selling more than buying. Binance with BUSD doing exactly the same. Only the big exception here is USD and futures. And that's finally a very interesting thing. Uh, we can see, well, uh, BUSD, Binance, so Binance is distributing, it seems. Uh, we see that Bitfinex did as well. I mean, look that, like a stir. Uh, it looks even like that would be the architect. Just imagine that Bitfinex would be almost their, the market driver. Now, how is that possible, right? It's not possible. It's not possible that Bitfinex is using their own tether just to drive the market and to support others like Binance to drive the market. Absolutely not. It's, it's just a conspiracy theory. Um, if we take a look here as well, I mean, uh, Bybit, not doing anything. Price pushing up, they are not only the, the, the only cons uh, con um, consistent consistent uh, as you know i'm not native speaker english but i think you you noticed that in the beginning right uh, but it it looks like that's a copy of the chart right the futures and mainly here coin margin contracts indicating they are pushing up with bitcoins at the moment um yeah coinbase 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 that explains why coinbase with us dollars yeah exactly and Gemini, come, come on. Bitstamp. Oh, I forgot Bitstamp. I don't know why I'm forgetting Bitstamp over and over again. Bitstamp is so bullish over and over again. And, and yeah, Kraken. Give me Gemini. Gemini, come on. Twins. Yeah. Yeah. Even if it's low. I mean, we are talking here. A CBD 120, uh, 200 bitcoins indicating 80, 80 bitcoins. I mean, it's nothing. It's just extremely low volume, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, now let us take a look um, if we see here something. Uh, mid of April, we had here um, a bigger supply out outside of exchanges indicating they are cashing out and they are waiting right now and that's why the brown line here pushed up very hard here we are talking about how much one billion no not really uh two oh no and eh? that's not possible i i hope that's an arrow <laughs> because it was supply outside of exchanges and we are talking about all Stable coins, all stable coins, the sentiment is tracking the data. It was almost 3 billion and the supply outside of exchanges changed mid of April to 62 billion. Uh, what? The supply on exchanges pushed up afterwards almost 10 days later and it's declining since then. Strange, really strange. However, we see we are not done because we received another billion here at least uh, exchange inflow. So to uh, stablecoin inflows to centralized exchanges means 
we could see 30k, 31k with those billion. It would be almost possible. They did it just oh, 40 minutes ago. 40 minutes ago. So to push up more. Um, USDT, nothing. USDC uh, buying the dip and now pushing up. And, and BUSD just, just saying, hey, guys, uh, it, it, that's it. That's really it. I just want, um, you know, to sell, distribute more. And the price is going up. That's great. So let me distribute more. That's, that's the whole thing behind that. So, yeah, nothing, nothing to see here, to be honest. Um, so we go, we go now a little bit further. We go to the entities, the entities, and we will see what the entities are indicating us. The entities are saying that retail is buying. It's buying, 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 buying. Even these guys are lifting up a little bit, nothing big. Even these guys are lifting up a little bit, nothing big. Re the, the market. <laughs> The market driver, uh, market maker, not doing anything. It's it's just you know, these guys dec wow declined a little. Oh yeah, okay. Those buy you know, um, they are B Binance is sending more and more to this um, to this uh, cold wallet they have, and that's why this entity is rising. This entity is declining. Let's just take a look to the count of wallets uh, yeah so here for example pushing up pushing up uh, no rising rising declining market maker maintaining and also here because we receive one another wallet with more than 1000 bitcoins and that's it we can check we can see here those 2,900 bitcoins coming from market maker, another 2,550, another 1,200. So I don't know. They are they want to sell once again uh, the way up. It seems hitting 31, 32 maybe. And yeah, a lot of bitcoins came also from um, miners at the last bigger one was uh, just few days ago four days ago uh, the last transaction of 2300 bitcoins to uh, centralized exchanges and the last really big one that's almost now uh, 10 days ago that was 6700 you can see how their um, uh, reserves are declining more and more and more uh, nothing here funds uh, what are funds doing declining more their balances uh spot volume decreasing more or <laughs> depends how you want to see that uh future volume uh, just um rising and that's it so if you take a look here they are still waiting at 25k as you can see at the same time they are also waiting at 32 they reinforce a little bit at 32 and um, yeah, waiting at 30K. So it seems they want to push up once again to 30K. Maybe go down once again to 27.5 before we go up. Uh, looks like a little bit now uh, very strange what they are doing here, placing those, uh, that's Coinbase by the way, uh, those orders here, um, strange. Bitstamp on Bitstamp also waiting here 30k but also 30,500 otherwise we need to go much more up heading 33 they remove the wall at 31.8 still at 26k and 25 uh, still for me um, you know uh, would be the levels where I would like to see the price um, to go to 25k but a lot to uh, absorb here uh, a lot of liquidity but at the same time to push up to 31 or even to 32 means 
to sell a lot because we have a lot of sell orders. The next bigger sell order here with 319 bitcoins is at 29k. Not really sure if that's poofing, could disappear everything else and then uh, let the price go up. That depends a little bit what what they want to liquidate first, longs or shorts. And also here, you know, BUSD, BTC, BUSD pair with Binance, also 25, 26K. Now Bitfinex here, for example, uh, on Bitfinex, we also see here between 31, uh, 30 and 32K, um, a lot of sell orders waiting there and 27k some liquidity wait, waiting 26 um, also between 26 25 then okay spot usually nothing kraken kraken also waiting here between 31 and 30 otherwise also 26 26 and a little bit higher 26 6 bitmax and that's the last spot chart. Now derivative at Bybit with uh, USD, nothing. Now with Tether, nothing. Only this CBD is rising, but as the future market is driving the crypto market, the uh, Bitcoin market. Uh, then Binance. Binance would like to see here. Um, yeah, that, that looks a little bit strange because usually I would say if that's not spoofing, it's a clear signal, that's the top. That's 29K and from here just down. Down at least to 28, even go a little bit more down, hitting 27.5 for example, would be possible. So yeah, maybe something we should have in mind. But it wouldn't be the first time that I'm expecting that and then they those orders disappears and they go down but they want to um uh, to short here and you can see they want to short uh, the whole way up to 30k now btc busd nothing bitfinex de de <laughs> okay bitfinex derivatives Please tell me that was just a mistake of the data because otherwise someone bought a lot of longs and I mean <laughs> the candle week just went up to 56,500. How much volume was necessary for that? Oh yeah, 300 bitcoins. Ooh. <laughs> Okay, that, that's actually, and without any doubt, any anything related to their algos, they changed something and that's why it happened. It looks like uh, wrong data. Uh, Kraken futures, nothing. Orkex futures, nothing. Uh, I need to see something, but... No, also here nothing. And Deribit. Deribit waiting also here. You can see a 25.3, otherwise uh, 27.2 or 30,800. They remove the liquidity here and that's it. That's absolutely it. That's it, gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, and those who are a mix of both, and yeah, so let us go forward.